Hello Internet and welcome to a new episode on my channel. Today the video is related to wood turning. I'm currently working on a video to discuss the pros and cons regarding using of a mini lathe. I have one myself for nearly two years and I think it would be an interesting video. Maybe it's interesting to see what's possible and what's not possible with these machines. And but this is content for one of the upcoming videos. For this video, I picked a piece of apple wood and yeah, it was more firewood. And um, during the turning, it did show a lot of cracks and not holes. So overall, it was less or more rubbish. But during the turning, I thought, hey, can I make something out of this firewood and turn it into a nice looking workpiece. It was quite an interesting task and I thought, okay, maybe you can also test this artificial minerals or stone granules that you can use for inlays and also to fill cracks. All in all, it turned out that the overall task uh, is interesting and worth for sharing. And so I invite you to have a look into my video, have a look into my problem solving. And I had a lot of fun during the turning and hope hopefully you will have some fun watching the video. Let's have a look into the video. After I prepared the piece, I mounted the faceplate on the bark side like you do for a natural edge bowl. Now comes the difficult part because the workpiece is unbalanced and must first be brought into shape. The lathe has a low weight and stability compared to large machines, so the machine vibrates very strongly. Keep in mind wood turning and working with lathe keeps the risk of injury. This video is only a demonstration how I proceeded and it's for entertainment purpose. Therefore, please take care and note the disclaimer in the video description. I take a bowl gouge here and start from the bottom of the bowl from the tailstock side. In the first operation, I try to bring the workpiece into a balanced shape to reduce the vibrations. Then I work on the final shape of the bowl. The pr procedure here seems to me to be the fastest and safest way. I work here in the medium gear setting at about 1000 RPM. In retrospective, I would say I have been better off starting with reduced speed, let's say around about 600 RPM. That would probably have been better and the machine would not be so heavily loaded. The more the outer shape is balanced, the more the vibrations are reduced. However, the weight is still unevenly distributed due to the shape of the workpiece. Here is the whole thing in slow motion. You can see very nicely where the wood is missing during the turning. This is very typical for natural edge bowl turning and you have to come slowly, step by step, to the finished shape. After smoothing the bottom, 
I can now start to create the tenon for the late shark. I work here with a record power late jug. It has a good quality and it is very versatile. There are various extensions, jaws offered for the late jug for a wide range of applications. There is still a chance to get rid of the imperfections in the workpiece like cracks and knot holes by adapting the shape. Let's see what we can do here. At this point I was not so sure how to continue with all the cracks and knot holes showing up. So I decided to continue with sanding and postpone the decision to a later point in time. In retrospective I would say this would be a good time to start filling up the cracks. You can also use resin or um, you can use, like I will do, this artificial stone or this mineral granules. In, in combination with super glue. As you can see, I made a different decision. I wanted to continue with the hollowing process and the inner side of the bowl. Um, therefore, I mounted here the late chuck and I will dismount the faceplate. And then let's see which surprises are waiting for us during the hollowing process and the inner side of the bowl. For the hollowing process I did use my standard bow gouge and also this Ellsworth bow gouge which is very good but sharpening is a bit time consuming. To speed up the hollowing process I drilled a hole in the center of the bowl yeah, this helps a lot and makes the overall process a lot faster.
This is how I work my way down to the bottom of the bowl. And now it's time for the final cuts, clean up everything. And finally I did use a scraper to clean up the bottom and the side walls of the bowl. Now it's time to use the inlay granules and to fill the gaps. They had a consistency like standard sea salt. This was a little bit too coarse for my application. Therefore I did use a hammerhead and grinded the material a little bit finer. And then I started to insert the material into the gaps. A brush is very helpful here to get the material into the narrow cracks. Afterwards I did use some two component super glue and finally I did use the activator to harden the super glue and the granules in the cracks. The super glue that I use took two to three minutes to fully harden and then it was time to get rid of the remaining glue. Um, therefore I did use a scraper and some more sharp chisels and then I continued with sanding. Finally, I had to sand the bowl and started with the 80 grit sandpaper and continued the way up to uh, 240 grit sandpaper. The finish that I use here is a prefabricated combination of beeswax and varnish. In my opinion, it looks very good. Now it's time to finalize the bowl, therefore we have to get rid of the tenon, flatten the bottom of the bowl and finalize the surface.
And finally, there we are. This is the outcome of my, let's say, little experiment. Uh, if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them if I have the time. And uh, if you found this video helpful and yeah, entertaining, please leave me a like. This helps me a lot and also if you want to see more of this content and want to follow my channel, please subscribe to my channel. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye, Freetown.